Here's a question for you. At the Sydney Olympic Games in 2000, which nation was the most successful in terms of medals won ahead of population? You may be surprised to know it was the Bahamas, with the gold in the women's 4x100 meters relay and Pauline Davis Thompson's 200 meters silver. And last year at the World Championships, Bahamian athletes won three medals, their biggest ever total in an international competition. Not bad when you consider that this is a country of only 300,000 people. One man who turned the tide for Bahamian track and field was Frank Rutherford. At the Barcelona Games in 1992, Rutherford leapt straight into the record books. When he came third in the triple jump, he won his country's first ever athletics Olympic medal. That one performance on that one day, on August 3rd, 1992, was the springboard for everybody to realize that we have the strength, uh, as well as, as the, the, the mental to win at that level. I gave them the confidence. I'm pretty sure that's what my performance did. Before then, it had been a very different story for Bahamian athletes. Gerald Wisdom, a former long jumper and friend of Rutherford, represented the Bahamas in the Olympics in Mexico in 1968. I was like a kid in a candy store, realizing that uh, very, very few Bahamians even had the opportunity to go to the Olympics. I mean, winning a medal was outside the realm of any thinking person in the Bahamas. And to see that he not only thought he could do it, but doing it, it was, um, it was just like me, okay, winning a medal. When he won the medal in 1992 in Barcelona. Frank's achievement was not only a sporting milestone. He may have won the country's third Olympic medal, but he was the first black Bahamian to do so. Like many of the country's black population back then, Rutherford grew up in Nassau's ghetto area called Over the Hill, in a one-room shack with no running water. Founded as a community for former slaves, it was so called because up until the 1970s, poor Bahamians were discouraged from living in town and so set up homes over the hill. Coming from over the hill, I guess the, the whole of your outlook is one that is positive. You know, especially back in that day and time when the whole movement of the, the country was for people from over the hill to move forward, upward, onward together. So that, that was that was my, my thinking. I, I always thought that I would have probably emerged to be something special. During the time Rutherford was growing up, the first black prime minister was in power. Dubbed the father of the Bahamas, Sir Lyndon Pindling led the country to independence from Great Britain in 1973. His policies broadened opportunities for everyone. The late Sir Lyndon was also a firm believer in the power and influence of sport, and Rutherford credits him for his Olympic success. If it hadn't been for Pindling's support, Rutherford would not have been able to train at the University of Houston, where he met another figure who also greatly influenced his career. I was training side by side with Carl Lewis, man. You know, the greatest track and field athlete probably ever. And him helping me to acclimate to, to, to that mindset, helped me to sharpen my own skills mentally to be able to do it. I mean, certainly I was not the most talented Bahamian athlete to that point to have gone to the Olympics, but I think I was the one that learned from Carl Lewis and other people how to win at that level, how to put the physical and the mental together on that particular day. And I think before, and, and trust me, I took a lot of criticism a lot of criticism I took from uh, various people in the public because they just didn't understand that mindset. You know, there was a mindset that I don't think nobody, no Bahamian athlete has ever had. And that's the reason why it happened for me because I had to develop it in order to accomplish that goal. Rutherford had already made history by becoming the first Bahamian athlete to win any medal on a world level with a bronze at the World Indoor Championships in 1987. But it was at the Olympics where the 27-year-old wanted to make his mark. I was convinced I was the gold medalist in that meet. 
And it's something that any great athlete will tell you. I mean, before you do something great, you've already you, you've already done it in your mind. You've already seen it. It's already it's already happened. It's just a matter of going to the action. It played out just like a movie would play out, you know, where I was the last jumper in the finals to have the final say. I had already captured the bronze medal, secured that for the country, and had the chance to go on now and really put the icing on the cake by winning, you know, the overall competition. But I fouled on the last jump. And still even today, my coach, my coach, he looks at me and he shakes his head today when I see him on the track, when I go to visit him, because he know I let it go, go away. Frank was given a hero's welcome on his return. Not only had he put the Bahamas on the sporting map, but coming from over the hill, his success story was to be an inspiration. People say thanks every day. Because they understood. I mean, that was a proud one of them. I think the proudest moment in, in, in a lot of people's lives, man. When on uh, August 3rd, I mean, you go back and reflect on it, man. Uh, people told me they cried. People told me they, they have never felt a kind of happiness, a pride, a national pride. The continued exposure and success of Bahamian athletes over the last 10 years has led to an increase in the number of scholarships available for Bahamians to study and train in the USA. There has also been a significant upgrading of resources on the islands, and now plans have been drawn up to build the first national stadium in Nassau. If a Bahamian athlete go away now to the Olympics and don't win, and they think something wrong with you. But before it was okay to go to the Olympics just to, just to go and say to the Olympics. But these people now expect Bahamians. That's the crazy thing. You go to the Olympics, you better bring back a medal to this country now. You know, when I won a medal, and then the girls and everybody else came behind and did the same, man, I'm sorry for the next Olympic team that's gonna have to travel, man. They got a lot of pressure on that. Okay, there we go. And as the Bahamas looks to continue its success on the world stage, one man will always be remembered for making a lasting impression on generations to come.